I can tell you this, although I have no definite conclusion, that God told Jeremiah that he should go to everyone that he was sent to and speak whatever God told him. And Jeremiah thought he was too young. Paul told Timothy, don't let anybody look down on you because you're young, but instead set an example for the believers. And, you know, one thing I do feel like I'm an expert at is this idea of just being dumb enough to believe that God can do anything. And that is one advantage to being young, you know, because you just haven't lived long enough in some cases to really realize that there are some things that can't be done. And so I feel like I fulfill a critical role in this year's Global Leadership Summit. The other faculty members will give you the wisdom that you need, and I will help you to get the dumbness that you need just to <laughs> believe you can actually do anything God says you can do, that anything that is written in His Word is possible for everyone who believes. So. That's my assignment today. They asked me to speak briefly about the subject of audacious faith. I want to help you raise your faith today. And uh, I guess you could say that audacious faith, believing God to do the impossible, is really the, the theme, the chorus, the hook of my life and ministry as a young man. Uh, when I was 16 years old, a pastor gave me a copy of a book by Jim Cimbala called Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire. And on page 23 of that book, there was a sentence that said, I despaired at the thought that my life might slip by without God showing himself mighty on our behalf. And I remember when I read that sentence as a junior in high school, how God gripped my heart. And I knew that one day God wanted me to start a church in a big city somewhere in the United States of America to reach people far from God. And it was years after that that, I found myself casting vision to a core team of seven other families, and I told them, I don't know exactly what we're going to do, where we're going to do it, but I don't want to waste my life. I don't believe God's called me to survive the world, but to change it for his glory. I don't want to just fill up a retirement account and buy a boat and die one day. I want to have some stories to tell of times when we risked and saw God come through big. So Elisha says something that I think is very timely for all of us. This is what the Lord says. Make this valley full of ditches. I love that. For this is what the Lord says. You will see neither wind nor rain. Yet this valley will be filled with water. And you, your cattle, and other animals will drink. And this is an easy thing in the eyes of the Lord. Everybody say easy thing. Easy. It's an easy thing in the eyes of the Lord. Nothing is difficult to our God. In fact, if the size of the vision that you have for your ministry and your life isn't intimidating to you, there's a good chance it's insulting to God. See, one of the reasons we struggle with insecurity is because we're comparing our behind the scenes with everybody else's highlight reel. So we see great things that God is doing and, and we don't realize that before they ever saw a drop of rain, they dug a lot of ditches. I want to say to somebody who's frustrated today, you're not dysfunctional just because you haven't seen the cloud yet. It doesn't mean that God doesn't have a purpose for you. You don't know what God might be doing through you that you can't see. But here's what I can tell you to the glory of God. If you will dig the ditches, God will send the rain. If you will do what you can do, he will do what only he can do. And that is verified in his word.